hello students let us continue our discussion on motion in a straight line in the last session we discussed about the position of the body and when the position of the body changes we took two factors one is distance or which is also called as path length and the other is displacement we discussed about both of them distance is the length of the path traveled by the body displacement is the shortest length between final position and initial position i gave you all the example and solved few problems simple problems so that you have clear idea about the distance and displacement now one more easy example that i want to give before i proceed for the next topic is as follows assume that a particle starts from point a and moves a sem in a semi circular path okay moves in a semi circular path of radius 10 meter okay it starts at starts from point a and the motion ends at point b the radius of the semi circular path prescribed by the body is 10 meter now in this example what is the distance traveled by the body and what is the displacement of the body distance traveled by the body is length of the path isn't it which is this path's length so what is the distance for this example distance is this length which is since it's a semi circle half of the circumference is the length of this path isn't it complete is complete circumference and here it is only the half of the circumference so the total circumference is 2 pi r and half of that is pi r right because it's a semi circular path now what is r radius of the path or radius of the semi circle prescribed is 10 meter so it's 3.142 into 10 which is going to be 31.42 meter what is this this is distance traveled by the body for this example and for the same example what is the displacement of the body displacement is the shortest length between the final position and the initial position final position is b initial position is a if i draw a straight line that would be the diameter of this semi circular path what is that equal to so here it is 10 meter here you have the radius is again 10 meter the total length is 20 meter okay you should not write it as ab so displacement of the body for the same example okay displacement of the body for the same motion is 10 plus 10 because this itself is the shortest length which is going to be 20 meter clear about the difference i this is one example now what if the body prescribes a complete circle when the body prescribes a complete circle the distance traveled will be 2 pi r total circumference of the circle and the displacement of the body will be zero because the initial position and the final position both are one and the same and there is no length between the same uh, between the same position okay the initial position and the final position both are same 
and hence the displacement of the body when the body prescribes a complete circle is 0 meter and the distance travelled by the body when it prescribes one complete circle is going to be 2 pi r which is the circumference of the circle. Okay? This is another example for distance and displacement. And now, uh, as I told you before, uh, I mean when we uh, set the coordinates in the last session, 0 was at certain position and to the right of the 0 it was all positive integers, to the left of the 0 it was all negative integers. There was one factor which we also took but we did not discuss in the last session. That factor is time, is not it? Simply distance and displacement will not give us the complete idea of the motion. See, we want to understand motion. So, we should have idea about the complete motion and how do we have that? So, when it is about understanding the complete motion, as you, uh, let me give you an example. Say a body starts to move from one point to the other point okay, and reaches the other point in, in certain time. Okay. Now, another body starts from the same point, reaches the same other point, but takes more time. Okay. Now, the distance and the displacement for both the body's motions, both the motion of the bodies is same, are, are same because I am taking both distance and displacement. Okay. Got the idea? Two bodies starts their motion from the same point, follows the same path, ends their motion at the same point, but the second body takes more time. Now, the question is, do the both, uh, I mean, whether the, whether both the bodies has the same kind of motion or not? Think over it. Obviously, since, uh, yes, distance and displacement are same, but the motion of those two bodies is not the same. So, uh, since we now have little difference in, in the motion, although distance and displacement are same, the motion is different, which means we need to understand few more factors to have the clear idea about the motion. So, which means I need one more factor to differentiate what is the difference between the motion of the first body, motion of the second body. In order to do so, time comes into the into place. So, and we say the body which is taking less time is moving faster compared to the other body. But this is all qualitative analysis, right? One is faster, the other is slower. But we always need mathematics and a factor which can connect us to the mathematics so that we have clear idea about it. So, that is why we are going to uh, take one more factor here, a very well known factor which is called speed. Okay? Speed is going to give us the idea how fast or how slow the motion is happening. Okay? Right. So, what is speed? Speed is defined as, the definition is as follows, rate, speed is the rate of change of distance, rate of change of distance with respect to, with respect to time. Okay. What do you mean by this? how fast the distance is covered or how slow the distance is covered 
is taken as rate of change of distance okay rate is an alternative word for both how fast or how slow in general okay keep that in mind Ex uh, uh, instead of saying how fast the motion is happening or how slow the motion is happening we can simply say rate what is the rate of motion okay that's how so rate of change of distance with respect to time is called speed now how about the formula of speed formula of speed is very simple speed is equal to distance traveled by the body distance traveled by the body by time taken for that distance okay so distance traveled by time taken is the speed this is the formula for speed of the body okay now very simple a body starts its motion from a ends at b the same example yes it has covered a radius of 10 meter the same previous example now what is the distance traveled distance traveled is pi r 31.42 meter right distance not the displacement distance okay distance traveled in this example is 31.42 meter okay now let me say uh, the body takes uh, say 20 seconds to cover the distance okay body takes 20 seconds time taken is 20 seconds if the time taken is 20 seconds second for this example then it is going to be uh, three distance traveled is 31.42 time taken is 20 second which will become so 3.142 by 2 1 point uh, 6 6 close to 1.66 or 1.656 meter per second okay so this is how we calculate speed distance traveled by time taken okay so speed is associated with the distance traveled keep that in mind okay now uh, we have obviously speed is a factor which we now have defined so we should also put the si unit of speed so si unit of speed is meter per second okay meter per second and similarly dimensional formula or dimension of speed is see for meter it is l1 per second so it is t minus 1 okay l1 t minus 1 is the dimension of speed and now now uh, see when i say speed uh, we have different types of speed okay they are not actually types of speed depending on the time interval depending on the time interval that we choose we take speed in in different uh, ways express speed in different ways okay let us see which are those uh, different speeds that we consider now and before i go for different speeds um, i would like to give the idea about uh, what kind of quantity it is see here what we have speed is distance traveled by time taken distance is a scalar quantity right time taken is also a scalar quantity both distance and time are scalar quantities so now speed will also be a scalar quantity okay distance does not have any uh, has any direction even time has no direction so speed will also have no direction and hence speed is a scalar quantity okay distance is a scalar quantity keep that in mind that is why speed is a scalar quantity okay 
Now let me come for different speeds. So speed can be either taken for a particular instant of time or over uh, the complete motion the body undergoes. For example, say uh, you start traveling from Hassan to Bangalore. So right from Hassan to Bangalore, your vehicle might not have, will not have definitely, it will not have same velocity during the journey, isn't it? The journey will have different velocities, means when you approach say uh, speed breakers, the, the, the body, the car or the vehicle will slow down. When you have no vehicles in the road, it goes with good, good speed, right? It fast, it goes faster. And when you go for say paying tolls, there the, the vehicle almost stops. So the speed of the body is different in a particular chosen motion. So the motion is vehicle starting from Hassan, ending at Bangalore. Okay. During this journey, the body has undergone different speeds. But for the entire motion, we can take single speed, one speed which can, uh, which can be applied for the entire motion. Okay. So when I take the entire motion, the speed that I consider is the average speed. Okay. And when I take a particular instant of time, say at uh, say, say uh, 10 minutes after the journey started, the speed might be um, 80 km per hour, say um, uh, particularly 35 minutes after the journey, the speed might be 20 km per hour, you might be going uh, on a speed breaker. So keeping all these things in mind, instantaneous velocity is the velocity of a body at a particular particular instant of time okay not velocity sorry it is speed right we have not yet come to velocity we will we'll take that so uh, and average speed is the speed for the entire motion okay so those two are the different speeds that we need to understand first is average speed so what is average speed? Average speed is the speed, um, sorry, not speed, okay. It is the total distance, okay, total distance traveled by the body, total distance traveled by the body by or you can also put that as the ratio of that is also fine. Okay, The total distance travelled by the body by the time by the time taken by the time taken by the body for that complete motion. Okay. So now as you can see uh, this gives, this can give us, this is, a, this definition is actually taken from a mathematical formula, okay. So the mathematical formula is as follows, okay. Speed, what kind of speed? Average speed. Average speed is equal to total distance, total distance by total time taken, okay. So, for the same example that we took, say from Hassan to Bangalore, the vehicle uh, might have taken say 3 hours for the journey, okay. So total time taken for the journey is 3 hours and the vehicle uh, will have covered 180 kilometers, okay, close to 180 kilometers, I am rounding it up. So this is the total time taken. 180 kilometer 
is the total distance traveled okay total distance traveled so for the journey of uh, you uh, from hassan to bangalore the average speed is going to be total distance which is 180 km by total time taken which is 3 hours which is equal to okay how much it will be 60 km per hour okay so 60 km per hour is the average speed of the vehicle clear with this yes obviously you cannot maintain the same 60 km per hour throughout the journey that's fine but that 60 km per hour gives you the idea that you have covered this much of distance in this much of time okay so that's about average speed clear with this very easy total distance for the motion divided by total time it takes okay that is what is average speed then you might ask so what is the difference between simply speed and average speed speed when i say speed i did not mention what kind of speed i am taking whether it is average speed of the motion or instantaneous speed of the motion but when i say average speed i am particularly saying the speed is taken for the entire journey okay and now we'll we'll take uh, instantaneous speed and analyze it uh, understand it now okay now uh, let me take instantaneous speed what is this instantaneous speed if i say generally in the same example of you traveling from hassan to bangalore when you are traveling you look at the odometer not the odometer speedometer which i always together speedometer of the car or the vehicle in which you are traveling the reading of the speedometer at any instant that you look at it is the instantaneous speed of your car right the instant that you look at it how much is it reading that matters 50 km per hour 60 km per hour 70 km per hour so that is the instantaneous speed in the next instant in the next coming time the speed might decrease or increase we are not bothered about it we are bothered only about that instant okay so instantaneous speed is the speed of the body at a particular instant of time particular instant of time that is what is instantaneous speed so when i say at particular instant even though it's a fraction of second that we are looking at uh, yes it is a small interval of time right even though it is 0.2 second very small time but it is an interval of time right from to a small interval of time very very small interval of time so the regular speed formula is applied to it okay so it is always distance traveled in very short interval of time okay distance by time or particularly short time or very short interval of time is instantaneous speed now when i write the proper expression in mathematical way see the time taken is going to be very short and hence i take that as delta t why delta t because it's the it's actually the uh, uh, interval of time that i'm taking which is delta t and in this delta t a short displacement is happening uh, short distance is traveled by the body okay which i can call it as delta d here okay now delta d by delta t small distance by small time very small distance by very small time okay now this delta t 
the interval of time okay from what time to what time are we choosing that itself is interval of time from this this delta t should be very close to 0 tends to 0 okay that is how we put that delta t tends to 0 okay. So, uh, yeah obviously we will put limit for this we will understand everything in detail when we discuss uh, when, when you uh, uh, discuss limits and derivatives in maths but for now you keep this much in mind okay. So, since the time interval is very short I am, I am just putting this symbol delta t is very very small so that it is close to 0 not equal to 0 close to 0 ok. So, this is how we express instantaneous speed mathematically. Obviously, uh, uh, there are different methods to get instantaneous speeds uh, calculus based methods we will discuss them no need to worry I will try to uh, teach a little can calculus here whatever necessary for this ok. Now, let me give you an idea of, of a um, kind of situation where the body uh, body's instantaneous velocity and average velocity is same for the entire motion. How is it possible? Say, uh, you if you consider an example of a car again, but in a or not the car. Let me take train. Okay, so a train starts moving from the station and attains certain speed, say 50 km per hour, and the train retains the same speed, okay, same 50 km per hour from certain point to certain point say for 2 kilometers. So, for 2 kilometers the train has not changed its speed is not it 50 kilometer per hour, 50 kilometer per hour, 50 kilometer per hour, 50, 50, 50, 50. So, when I consider that motion when it started it the speed was 50 when it ends the motion it was 50 what up happens after that we are not we are not bothered what has happened before this we are not bothered because our observation is from this point to this point ok 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. So, for this entire motion the train has maintained the same speed which means the instantaneous velocity instantaneous speed at this point, this point, this point every point is same. So, for this kind of motion for this uh, kind of uh, the, this kind of speed maintained shall be considered as uniform speed ok. It is uniformly moving ok, no change in speed ok. So, that kind of speed is considered as uniform speed. So, what is uniform speed? See, when the body undergoes uniform speed as you can see the body will cover equal distance in equal interval of time right, which means the body undergoing uh, motion with same speed will cover equal distances in first minute it covers certain distance in the second minute it covers the same distance in third minute it covers the same distance again in fourth minute also it covers the same distance. So, if a body covers same distance or equal distance in equal intervals of time ok if the body covers equal distance in equal intervals of time. What is interval of time? Final time minus initial time that is interval of time ok because time will be running running in the stop clock or any clock that we choose 850 the train was here 851 train was here and it has traveled 1 kilometer 852 the train was here and it has traveled 1 kilometer again totally 2. So, in 8 from 850 to 851 the time interval is 1 minute and the distance traveled is 1 meter I am sorry 1 kilometer and from 851 to 852 the time interval is again 1 minute and it has the train has all again traveled 1 kilometer. So, that is about it uniform speed is the is defined as uh, 
uh, the if if a body if a body covers equal distances covers equal distances in equal interval of time in equal intervals intervals of time then the body then the body is said to have then the body is said to have uniform speed and the body is said to have uniform speed okay so that is about uniform speed definition of uniform speed and take a note when the body undergoes when the body has uniform speed then instantaneous speed is equal to average speed okay when do we have instantaneous speed equal to average speed when the body is undergoing uniform speed or going with uniform speed then we can say uh, it has equal instantaneous speed and average speed okay this is everything about speed and you got to know that speed is associated with distance traveled by the body now similar to this whatever we have discussed now we have one more factor to discuss which is associated with displacement okay let us take that now okay now we shall take the next factor as i said which is velocity so what is velocity now as i said speed is associated with distance traveled velocity will be associated with displacement of the body okay so velocity is rate of change of displacement okay velocity is rate of change of displacement with respect to time very easy right everything goes the same way how fast the displacement is changing or how slow the displacement is changing gives us the idea of velocity and now uh, as usual uh, we will go for the formula of velocity now we represent okay speed is generally not considered uh, rigorously or again and again mathematic in, in the mathematics of uh, motion in a straight line okay but velocity is considered uh, uh, in in many areas or in many problems and so we will keep a symbol for velocity the symbol for velocity is small v okay small v is the symbol of velocity and i hope you remember the symbol of displacement is either s or x keep that in mind okay i'll choose s okay so the formula of velocity mathematical formula is given by velocity is equal to displacement by time taken so displacement by time taken is the formula for velocity of the body now i'll take the same example again okay the body starts at a ends at b it is undergoing the motion in a semi circular path with radius 10 meter okay for the same example again the body takes a uh, 20 seconds to cover the distance from a to b for such a motion if you are asked what is the velocity of the body then you should consider the displacement factor what is the displacement that has happened when the body moved from a to b displacement is this shortest length which is 10 plus 10 20 meter 
So, displacement happened is 20 meter. What is the time taken? Time taken is 20 seconds again. So, velocity of the body for this example is 1 meter per second. Okay, V. Now, um, again, SI units of speed and velocity are same. Okay, SI unit of velocity is meter per second. Okay, and again, dimension of velocity is L1 T minus 1. Right. So, this is the SI unit of velocity and this is the dimension of velocity. Same, same as of speed. And uh, what kind of quantity it is? See, the, all the quantities are either scalars or vectors. If they have direction, they are, they are vectors. If they do not have direction, they are scalars. Since displacement has direction, even though time does not have any direction, since displacement has the direction, velocity will also have the direction which is same as the displacement. Okay? Keep this in mind. Displacement will have certain direction as we have discussed about in, in the last session. So, velocity will also have the same direction as of displacement. Okay? So, velocity will have certain direction and hence velocity velocity is a vector quantity. Okay. So, this is about uh, velocity, what kind of quantity it is and similar to the speed, now we are going to take different kinds of velocities. If I describe velocity for the entire motion, again it is going to be average velocity. If I take velocity for an instant of time, a particular instant of time, then it is going to be instantaneous velocity. Okay. Let us go for that and see. Right. Again, I will take uh, average velocity first very similar to whatever we have discussed in speed, okay. Average velocity. How do we define it? Average velocity is the uh, ratio of, okay. You can also put it in the same way as we did it with uh, speed, but you can also put this, uh, put it as the ratio of total displacement of the body to the total time taken of the body, okay. For speed, it was total distance by total time. For average velocity, it is total velocity, total displacement by total time. That is it, very simple. Okay. So, it is the uh, total displacement of the body by the total time taken. Again, as I am telling, there is one more way to give the same statement, which is the ratio of total displacement to the total time taken. Okay, Ratio, I hope you have the idea. When I say ratio of, the first term that comes is in the new, is kept in the numerator and the second term that comes is kept in the denominator. So, average velocity is V A V G, okay, it is taken as V A V G, average velocity V A V G is equal to, V A V G is equal to total displacement of the body, okay, total displacement by total time taken, that is it very simple right now for the same example from say from hassan to bangalore that we took the 
the vehicle might have traveled 180 kilometers but the, that is distance traveled by the vehicle right if you properly take a map draw a straight line from Hassan to Bangalore then that would be somewhere around 150 kilometers you can try it okay might be lesser uh, might be more but I am approximating it because in some ways you might be going uh, somewhere like uh, deviation can be it might be taken that's why okay so from Hassan to Bangalore you, you take the map and draw a straight line then that is the displacement the body has traveled or, or the body has undergone so that might be 150 kilometers okay so for the same example of Hassan to Bangalore 150 kilometer is the displacement time taken is 3 hours and hence the average velocity is 50 kilometer per hour what is this average velocity of the vehicle which went from Hassan to Bangalore okay average velocity velocity is total displacement not the total distance traveled okay displacement shortest length so this is about average velocity now we'll take instantaneous velocity again simple okay so instantaneous velocity is as follows okay so again very similar to instantaneous speed the velocity of a body okay instantaneous velocity is the velocity of a body at any instant or at a particular instant any or a particular both are fine let me check take a, a particular at a particular instant of time okay the velocity of a body at a particular instant of time is instantaneous velocity now uh, what is the expression for this instantaneous velocity okay instantaneous velocity is again represented by v itself I okay, will directly write the expression now. Small displacement, okay, which is delta s, which can also be taken as delta x, okay, because it is small displacement. Small displacement that happens in small time that we choose, delta s by delta t. This time is going to be very small, very small that we choose, it is going to be nearly equal to 0, okay, nearly equal to 0. So, we will put limit for that. So, this is the expression of instantaneous velocity v is equal to limit delta s by delta t such that delta t tends to 0. The time interval that we choose is going to be very 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 small and hence the expression looks like this. So, instead of writing all of this, okay, we will put them using the calculus way which is going to be ds by dt okay ds by dt is how we put all these things okay delta s by delta t can have uh, or say delta s is certain change of distance certain change in displacement delta t is certain interval of time or certain change in time certain it can be any amount of change but when I write delta s by delta t, the factor in the denominator delta t is going to be very, very, very small. It is very close to 0. Okay? That is the difference between delta s by delta t and ds by dt. Okay? Delta s by delta t is when we can say delta t can be any interval of time. It can be small, very small, large, very large, anything. But when I write ds by dt, here dt is represents very small very 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 small interval of time okay very small interval of time uh, so this will give us the uh, idea of instantaneous velocity 
we'll see how to solve problems based on this and all. So I have told you instead of ds by dt in problems we also make use of x dx by dt instead of s I can put x v is equal to dx by dt is also fine okay right and now moving ahead the final kind of speed is uniform I am sorry velocity is uniform velocity similar to uniform speed how do we define uniform velocity if the body covers what was the case with uniform speed if the body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time then we say the body has uniform speed and now if the body covers equal displacements in equal intervals of time then it is uniform velocity that is it ok. So, if the body covers equal displacements equal displacements in equal intervals of time then the body is said to have uniform velocity said to have uniform velocity now the body which has uniform velocity uh, the the kind of motion that happens when the body is having uniform velocity is considered to be uniform motion ok. So, when a body is moving with uniform velocity then that kind of motion ok that kind of motion is called uniform motion. So, let us take uniform motion again uh, uniform motion separately and uh, define it. What is uniform motion? The same definition if the body covers ok. If the body covers equal displacements equal displacements in equal intervals of time then the motion then the motion of the body is said to be or the, the body is said then the body is said to be is also fine ok. Then the body is said to be in uniform motion that is also fine or the motion of the body is said to be uniform motion. Uniform motion. So, that is about uniform motion which is same as of uniform velocity. Now again take a note when the body is undergoing uniform velocity or uniform motion both are one and the same ok. When the body is undergoing uniform velocity or uniform motion we say now we can say the instantaneous velocity of the body and the average velocity of the body are same is not it you can easily say so instantaneous velocity and average velocities are same. And I hope uh, I gave you the idea that velocity is a vector quantity ok velocity is a vector quantity not sure whether I have told you just take I am trying to remind, remind you again. So, this is everything about speed and velocity ok and uh, yeah difference between distance and displacement difference between speed and velocity ok three differences uh, is an important question which is asked for board examination ok and definitions of them can be uh, put as one of the difference ok always 
and for speed and the distance it is a scalar quantity is always one difference for for uh, displacement and velocity both of them are vector quantities okay that makes the second difference and the third difference is see when you take uh, uh, displacement of the body displacement of the body can be both uh, positive positive negative or zero following if the body starts from certain point goes to certain point like this we say displacement is positive if the body starts its motion from the same point and goes in the backward direction like this opposite to the coordinate system then we say the displacement is negative if the body starts its motion goes certain distance displacement uh, distance and comes back to the same position okay then we say displacement is zero so displacement of a body can be both zero positive and negative uh, after the motion right after the motion before the motion it's always zero right so once the motion has begun displacement can be both positive negative and zero but after the motion distance can never be zero isn't it the distance is always positive after the motion you go like this 10 meters you come back so 10 plus 10 20 meters is the distance yes displacement is zero but distance is 20 so distance can not be zero after the motion displacement can be zero after the motion and the same difference can be put for speed and velocity okay speed cannot be zero after the motion average speed particularly i'm talking about average speed cannot be zero after the motion and average velocity can be zero after the motion because when the body comes back to the same position the displacement is zero so the total displacement is zero whatever the time it takes zero by anything is zero right so those three differences i've just given you the idea you try to make the table and put them in the table okay when you send the keynote put the, send them in the table format after this i check them once so that uh, i'll and, and I, i'll also give you this uh, difference in proper format uh, when i send you the notes but uh, I want you to make out the differences first. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll take few more factors of motion and understand motion in straight line in detail in the next session. Thank you.